Good morning, everybody. Orin Jay here with another War of the Visions video, and today is the final day of the New Year's Cup. You can see we are doing the top eight draft because it is the top eight finals. You see the eight on the left-hand side of the screen. You also see that we are right now in the middle of picks. So here's how it works. We go one through eight. Kiwi, Mont, Cuckington, Dervis, Sir McCrane, Zalk, Ace, Maverick. That's your top eight. They're making picks live right now. We're going to talk about those picks as they come in a little bit. Um, and then it goes eight to one. They'll all get four units. At the end of picking, they can use those four units, make any team comp they want to out of them. And then we'll have a bracket. We'll fight it out. We'll watch every match on stream. We'll record every match for the YouTube video. It's going to be awesome. So, okay, let's look at what's going on on the screen here. Kiwi, who, by the way, is the defending cup champion, won the, like, winter cup. Actually, it was the beach cup that we played in wintertime last week. And he's going back to his light element units. He picked Starlight Elena, pick number one. She was also the first pick in last uh, last month's draft. Okay, Mont is the second seed in this tournament because we had a no-show. Yuppie didn't show, so um, that actually bumped the fourth through eighth up and Maverick is taking her spot or his spot and is sliding into eight. So anyway, Mont is the second seed for this tournament. He snags Cloud, who was picked 26th last time. Somehow that dude made it down to 26th. This time he's in a more respectable spot for his status in this game at number two. Okay, Cuckington picks Valentine's Day Salir. She was 10th last time, third this time. Abara is picked fourth by Dervis. She did not exist in the last tournament, or at least in the last draft, I think. McCrane picks Black Rose Helena. Zalk snags Charlotte. That is a good takeaway from Mott. If Mott was trying to build a, like, big-time lightning team with that cloud, Zalk takes away the big tank there. Ace snags Dwayne, taking that potentially away from Sir McCrane's Dark Squad. And now here's really interesting picks. It's Maverick's turn. Um, Maverick sliding in as the sub today has two picks in a row. There's a lot of really good units in this game still alive, and Maverick gets two of them. So I'm watching the Discord here. Uh, I want to make sure Maverick knows that it's his turn to pick. Now, my tier list needs to be updated. Now, that's a video I'm currently working on. Uh, but, pretty freaking cool spreadsheet right here. Now, Maverick's first pick with pick number eight snags Moraga. And now Maverick has another pick. So, maybe an Earth team here? And this is a good move. Like, if you're Maverick in this spot, you have a chance to see what everybody else has done. And get a foundation of your own team. So, he could go Earth Earth. And that could be a big deal. All right, he's typing. He's thinking. It's this big brain stuff right here, all right? It's hard. You got to you got to think it through. I suspect Oberon. If I was if I was a betting man, I would bet Oberon. Fryevia is the pick. Oh man. Okay, out of out of left field, it's Fryevia as the ninth pick. So, a big takeaway from Cuckington right there. If Cuckington was going for the ice team. I suspect though that Valentine's Day Salir from Cuckington could just be a like protection from the wind meta team. And note, there's no wind units off the board yet. Okay, Ace is up. Now with Ace's first pick, he got Dwayne. So a, uh, a dark tank slash like high damage bruiser takes Yuna next so a very powerful pick and the first like true support unit I mean Fravi is kind of a support but she's also kind of a tank anyway Yuna off the board big pickup right there it's Zalk's turn Zalk goes Halloween Little Leela so okay Halloween Little Leela there's our first uh our first wind unit off the board I know the graphic says it's she's dark unit and she is evil but she is also a wind unit. Macrain picks up Golbez. So lots of dark power getting pulled away. You already have Black Rose, Helena, Dwayne, and Golbez um, snagged off the board. Okay, Dervis is up. Dervis with the first pick snagged a bar. So what do you do with a Nabara? This is the power. This is the cool thing with the drafting. Uh, 
What do you do with Ibarra when Cloud and Charlotte are gone? Not an option anymore. Do you go with... And look at Lego Pants, like, fixing that graphic live. That's pretty, uh, that's pretty dang cool. Dervis picks up UR Zazon, the big, unkillable Earth Daddy, off the board. UR Zazon was picked 13th in the last tournament. So that's a pretty OP pick. Fryevia, Golbez, and Ibarra will be making their debut in the draft today. So far, though, everything else was picked last week. Okay, Cuckington's up. And Cuckington goes for Aranea. Okay, so there is another ice unit coming through. King Mott taken away by Mott. And that, you guys like, look. Mott made this tournament by winning, like, week three. And rocking his namesake, King Mott. So stays true to the Mott. And that's the first fire unit off the board. Was picked 12th last week. Was picked 15th this week. So right about the same spot. Notice you are Zazan was picked 13th both weeks, or both months, both times we've done this. All right, uh, Kiwi's up. Now, Kiwi has not picked since Starlight Elena, has two picks, somehow still gets Engelbert, and still gets Jaden. Do y'all want to lose? Like, does everybody else just, like... <laughs> so there we go. Kiwi, the winner of last week's tournament, manages to get Engelbert, Jaden, Elena... With pick 1, 17, and 18. Okay. There we go. Mott's up. He picks up Rain. So Mott does have the makings of a really strong fire team, actually. With King Mott and Rain. And then if we're looking at the rest of Mott's picks, also has Cloud. That, that team doesn't suck. Like, that team doesn't suck at all. Now, Cuckington's up. Hmm. I'll take a minute to, uh, I'll take a minute to say, if you guys have never had the new Coke Zero Sugar, I'm 100% not sponsored by them, but it's still 100% a good drink. So, uh, I highly recommend it. Now, Rain, yes, I have new, a little bit of new respect for Rain. Playing a little manual PvP this week. Uh, Rain put in a lot of work for my manual PvP team. I kind of had to quit. My week got really weird. But, man, Rain, King, Mott, those people can do some work. Yeah, so we have people in Twitch chat right now wondering how much Kiwi Stings paid everyone else to uh, not pick, you know, Jaden. All right, Cuckington comes in with the Laswell pick. So, okay, Cuckington has formed a banger of an ice team right here. Valentine's Day Salir, Aranea, Laswell, and then mix in a, uh, what was Cuckington's other pick? No, that's what he's got. Okay, that is it. That's the ice squad right there. Okay, Dervis is up. Dervis goes for Classy Glassy. Ooh, okay, a third fire unit off the board. I am shocked, by the way. Wind, like where's wind in this? Halloween Little Leela's been taken by Zalk. But there is a wind powerhouse squad out there. Maybe though these people, like the people in this tournament, just don't play wind. We might have some non-wind players. All right, Sir McCrane is up. Okay, yeah, Twitch chat thinks wind players got scared by that Valentine's Day Salir pick. And this is a thing, right? Like, this is a one and done. This is a top eight bracket. I'll rearrange the seeds so one plays eight, two plays seven. It'll play out. If you lose, you're donezo. So, having a little... Okay, yeah, as we're talking about this, here comes the wind. Joom and Winter Luartha off the table will both be making their debut in the draft to right now. So, okay, let's scroll it down. We still got some picks to do. Uh, it's Ace's turn. Ace goes Kane. Ace goes Kane. The recently 120'd Kane. And notice this is pretty cool. The last one, two, three, four, five, six picks did not show up in the last draft. That's awesome. And Kane is non-elemental. I'm just giving you a hard time, Leo. This sheet is actually really awesome. And he fixed it live again. That is next level stuff. Okay, Maverick's up. Maverick with back-to-back -back picks again. The power of the eight seed. All right. Now, Maverick with his first two back-to-back -back picks... Picked Moraga and Fryevia. So, 
a lot of stuff on the table here. Back-to-back -back picks with a Moraga. I could see Maverick going Earth-Earth right here and having a nice Earth squad. Or could just go for, like, balance. When you have Fryeve, you basically have a tank that can both support and tank, and it really opens the door for whatever you want to do. Let's see what Maverick does, though. I don't know. If I was Maverick right now, I would pick Oberon, and I think I would pick... Man, who else? Because because UR Zazan's gone. Dervis took that away. I, if I could, I would go Oberon, UR Zazan, but they're out of here. So I'd probably go Oberon, Halloween, Ryu. Okay, he does go Oberon. One more pick, though. There's so many good Earth things out there. You could also go a healer route here. Run like a Moraga Oberon support. But who is that? I don't know. Okay. Maverick contemplating. Oberon, by the way, was picked fourth last time. Drops to 24th this time. Oberon was the MVP of my... Uh, of my limited guild wars, by the way. Definitely my MVP. Oh, it's a spicy one. He goes Noctis. Noctis, the 20th pick from last month, slides only to 25th. And that is a, that's a solid Earth lineup there from Maverick, who gets away with an Earth lineup and nobody else is like hard forcing wind. Now, Zalk does have Winter Luartha and Halloween Little Leela. So that could be a potential bad matchup. But Fryevia for Maverick gives them an ice tank just in case. If that team runs into wind, you have Fryevia to maybe tank that up. A really smart draft from Maverick here. Okay, Ace is up. This will be Ace's last pick. What does Ace have so far? Let's scope it out. So Ace went with Dwayne. Yuna, so like you could build anything you want around Dwayne Yuna, then went Kane, and now we'll go with what? Thinking. Yeah, this is the this is the big brain time right here. Oh, it is the spiciest of emo boy picks. It's the spiciest of emo boy picks. Coming in. Oh, we have tabs, you guys. Knight of Ruinstern is picked up. So, check out these tabs we can go to right here. Look at how fancy this is. Okay. We can see so far, we have two people done picking. Maverick, triple Earth with Fryevia. Ace, triple Dark with a Yuna. Next up is Zalk. Spreadsheets are the best. Alright, Zalk's picking. Zalk's typing already. Let's see what he goes with. He types, hmm, into Discord. Hmm, indeed. So, okay, Zalk's thinking. Let's look at what Zalk is contemplating here. Charlotte, Halloween, Little Lila, Luartha. So, double wind, Charlotte, and then comes with, you are Zaza. Wait. Wait a second. You are Zaza's gone. Right? Somebody already picked him. Yeah, Dervis already snagged you, are Zazan. Zalk is in timeout. Not really, there is no timeout. But notice the spreadsheet does plop red. That means no, no. No, no. Oh, okay. The pick changes to uh, the original. No, wait. I guess Thancred would be the original 100 cost unit, right? Anyway, it goes to Gilgamesh. Gilgamesh was picked 8th last time, so another ice unit comes through, Gilgamesh comes in, that puts Zalk's roster at Charlotte Halloween Little Wee Leela, Halloween Little Leela, Luartha Gilgamesh, Tank, Quicken Shenanigans, Healer, one of the top tier DPSs in the game, so Zalk gets away with a really big lineup. Okay, next up, Sir McCrane. Uh, let's look at what Sir McCrane's playing with right now. Sir McCrane is running Black Rose Helena, Golbez, Joom. So, big time magic damage. Dark mages right here with a tank. 
what do you want to fill out that roster just in case you pair against, let's say, Kiwi Stings, who has the God Tier Light roster? And I'm not even going to say who I think Kiwi's picking with his fourth pick because uh, I don't want to ruin it for him. Okay, McCrane is typing. Let me in top eight and I'll bring water. You know, wait, no water unit has been picked. <laughs> Every water unit in the game still on the table. Rough. <laughs> uh. Poor Aerith indeed. Okay. McCrane picks Swimsuit Kilfay. So, round out the Dark Squad plus Joom with Swimsuit Kilfay. This is both a good unit and a good takeaway from Kiwi because it prevents Kiwi from having a defense penetrator, right? Like, Ellen is checked by Spirit, Jaden is checked by Spirit, Engelbert's a tank. Summer Kilfay could have really rounded that light unit, that light uh, roster out. So, that's a big takeaway from Sir McCrane. So, uh, there we go. Now, Dervis is up. What's Dervis got so far? Dervis has Abara, okay. You are Zazan and Classy Glassy. So, just all kinds of damage all over the place here for Dervis. How do you round this out? Oh, we get a water unit, I believe. We get a water unit. Dervis goes Ildira for... The fourth pick, I believe. There it is. It's Ildira coming in so, like, <laughs> so unexpected that she's not even in the spreadsheet yet. But she just got her 120 this week. So that's a big, that's a big pop-off. So let's look at this roster. What does this look like? What's the thought here? You are Zazan is a beefy boy that has to die a whole bunch of times. Abara, top tier damage dealing mage. Glacella, a top tier damage dealing mage. Ildira, I don't know. I haven't seen 120 Ildira in PvP action yet, but lots of magic and a UR Zazan. Okay, now Cuckington is next. Cuckington is triple ice so far. So what are we getting here? He says, are you ready for this word I can't say in a middle school classroom. Varouche. <laughs> I can't read what he wrote, but he meant Varouche. So, okay. It's triple ice with Varouche. Interesting. Okay. I don't know what the plan is here. And then Mont's picks already come in. Just rounding out the fire roster with Minwoo. And now Mont actually has my entire uh, class match team of King Mont, Rain, Minwoo. Okay, that leaves Kiwi, and let's see if I was right about Kiwi's last pick. Because, I'm not going to lie, I had uh, this MR girl on my brain for this pick. Uh, she's probably better than like half the units picked so far. 120 cost unit in an MR's body. Completely broken and not fair. We'll see. Triple light for Kiwi. So... You don't have to worry about taking anything away at this point. <laughs> so, uh, chat guess is Sosha. Sosha was not who I was thinking of here. Let's see. All the way from New Zealand. Kiwi's doing some big brain calculations right now. I have a feeling he does not end up at Old Doa, but chat does make their guesses. Maybe Titus? Maybe it's uh, maybe crazy. How about uh, maybe it's uh, just Tank Mott, regular old uh, or Terrell? Sure. Gotta be Nasha. Uh-oh, he's typing. Here it comes. Here it comes. Sir Cuckington says, GG Kiwi, let's play for second, boys. Kiwi is still yet to make his pick. Drawing out the suspense. Camilo, there it is. Okay, the Kiwi Sting special right here. And he ends up being able to get that defense penetrating option with Selection Quest Unit Camilo, 
who, by the way, was picked 31st last week by your boy Kiwi, I believe. So there we go. That rounds out the draft. Here's your rosters. And you can see a lot of mono element teams, but more rainbow teams. More rainbow teams. In fact, every team is splashed a little bit, except Kiwi got away with four light units by some crazy miracle. All right, let's go. Uh, we're gonna. I'm gonna cut for a second. We're gonna go to the bracket next. I'm gonna rearrange it so they're in the right seeds, and then we'll kick it off with some battles. All right, so here we go. It is time for the first match of the uh, New Year's Cup Finals bracket. It's Kiwi versus Maverick. And here is what the bracket looks like. You can see single elimination, there's your matchups, that's how you move on. Now real quick, we do have a little data here over these players. And we've played a lot of tournaments on Friday Night Fights over the years. If you look, Kiwi has been in 19 of our tournaments. Maverick has been in 21. Kiwi has won 60% of his matches. Mavericks won 72%. So even though Kiwi Stings is the number one seed in the tournament, maybe, maybe Maverick can take him down. Now, Kiwi did get the like power light roster, right? He's got Engelbert. He's got Jaden. He's got Starlight Elena. And he slid in a little Camilo for good measure. Will the light element meta get Kiwi a second straight uh, cup victory? I don't know. I don't know. But we're about to find out. Or will Lego Pants kick him out in the first round? We're kicking it off. Let's jump into the match. It is Engelbert, Elena, Jaden in a surprise to absolutely nobody versus the light, the Earth Boys, Noctis, Oberon, and Moraga. Now, really crucially right here, Jaden shot everybody before Noctis could get the spirit buff on. And because of that, it did a ton of damage. Even Moraga, who's a pretty thick boy, took a bunch of damage. Oberon does pop bells. Uh, Moraga walks up big taunting blade right there, gets his hate up and does a lot of damage to the two carries. Critically, that landed on Elena, right? You all know Elena dodging stuff. Moraga out of AP has to use bells. It's Noctis's turn. Is he in range to do damage? He slides up, plunge. You guys, wait, Jaden's dead. Are the Earth Boys better than the Light Squad? Okay, Moraga dies in return. It's Oberon's turn. The king of the earth element. He's going to jump. He takes to the air. Luckily for the earth boys, Engelbert was out of range and Elena has her courage popped. I'm predicting it right now. One HP Elena wins this fight. Okay, here she goes. It's her turn. She goes up to Noctis and cuts him in half from behind. Oberon's up. Can he get in range? Is he only in range of Elena right here? He's jumping again. He's landing. Ellen is dead. My prediction was wrong. It's Engelbert versus Oberon. It's the, uh, I don't know what to call Engelbert from the story. The like sort of mad, angry leader of a division versus the king who sucks up to a desert. Anyway, here comes the uh, limit break from Oberon. 5,900 damage onto Engelbert. You guys, wait a second. Wait a second. Hold on. Is, is Oberon going to do it? Is Oberon going to do it? I think he's going to do it. Stun Blade, Courage Proc, can Engelbert with one HP. Oh, wait, he puts Courage back on. <laughs> He's going to troll. He's going all the way to the end with his trolling heart. Oberon props Courage for the second time. He doesn't have it three times. So he's just going to attack. 1,000 damage. He doesn't have Reflex. He doesn't have Re-Raise. Engelbert goes down. And, and Maverick... Maverick picks up the upset right here. I think I called Maverick Lego Pants for like the whole intro to this video. That's my bad. That's Maverick, not Lego Pants. Whoops, but it's live, so I can't edit that out. Whatever. Anyway, Kiwi Stings, the winner of week one, goes down to Maverick in the first round. That means Maverick is moving on. Good tournament, Kiwi. Good month of playing the game. We've got our next match to go to. Let's go there next. Okay, here we go. The second match in the opening round. We've got Sir McCrane versus Dervis. And look at these big mages making their appearance here. Sir McCrane rocking the uh, our newest dark mage in the game, right? Golbez making his debut. And Ibarra on the other side. 
So what other two units did they go with? Sir McCrane is going with Joom and Black Rose Helena. So tank and double Dark Mage for Sir McCrane. A really powerful lineup. Joom actually is able to walk forward in Stormwind Rend at the beginning of the fight. I'm not sure that's what Sir McCrane wanted Joom to do. Might have gotten a little bit baited by the enemies uh, being so close to that wall and her being able to hit through it. Now, Dervis is running a real spicy team over here. Just no tanks. We're going three mages. It's Ildira, it's Classy Glassy, and it's Ibarra. Ildira starts things off with her limit break, getting that CT manipulation online. A Glassy's channel in a spell, Ibarra thinking about things. She has 109 AP, so she can do whatever she wants. She's going to go Wailing Storm, decent damage onto all of them, and then big follow-up. Oh my gosh, it's just a straight-up wombo combo team. <laughs> like, that is just annihilation. Now, with that CT manipulation, they get to go again. Because Abara, I'm sorry, the classy glassy knocked everybody's seat. That was just, what? Did Dervis like 2 billion IQ this map and this comp that nobody thought was any good? Like, I don't know if anybody thought the comp that just all mages was going to do stuff. But it did stuff. It killed everybody. Oh my gosh. GG. Let's go to the next match. Alright. So, that last match was incredibly explosive. Now, we've got Mont versus Ace. If we head over here for a second and actually look at the uh, at the records here, we see Mont, Ace, both have played in a lot of tournaments in the past. Mont 14, Ace 34. Uh, Ace at a 48% win percentage. That might seem low to some people, but that means you're winning a lot. Like... You're going to lose once every single time, no matter what, right? Unless you're the winner of the, of the whole thing. Ma has 71% win percentage. Get out of here with 71% win percentage. That's insane. But Ace is no, uh, Ace is a veteran of the tournament. So if we look here, you can see we're already into it. Ace is running Dwayne, Kane, Yuna, and Yuna is already summoning out the Space Chicken. So let's go full screen, see that beautiful graphic, and Mott, sticking true to his name, is running King Mott with a Minwu and a Cloud. So tank, support, hyper carry. Now, Mott gets disabled. That could be a big deal because it was a Quicken Mott like Wombo combo plan here. And instead, it's a Quicken Mott, I'm not gonna do anything because I'm disabled, and that, that was not the plan. I'm just going to tell you that's not what Mott had drawn up here. But triple slash from Cloud, oh my gosh, it doesn't quite kill everybody. It's another quicken onto the King Mott who still can't do anything. But hey, at least he's not disabled anymore. That's pretty cool. If you can't cure it with Esuna, just give him quicken until the status effect runs out. Okay, Kane drops the limit break. Mott is now slowed. Mott's not getting a turn, let's be real. It's Yuna's turn now. She's channeling a heal. Dwayne's up. Dwayne goes for the auto attack. King Mott is still alive. And you know what? Minwoo can heal. She's channeling. Here comes Kiraga from Yuna. Okay, Cloud's up. He's got 38 AP. Triple slash. Kane's dead. Kane's down. But he has his buff. Kane has courage. Mott finally gets to attack, and he chooses to auto-attack Dwayne. Here's a Quicken. Okay, wait. Is, is Quicken Mott finally going to do something? Is it coming? He hits Dwayne again. Does he have all his skills turned? I don't know what he's waiting for. I don't know. This is this is either like Omega Huge Brain or somebody was in like a different game mode. Oh, it's just let Minwoo carry. Shadow Flare comes out. Kane's dead. Kane's dead. Dwayne's almost dead. Aeon Bond proc, so Yuna's at full HP because it's Yuna. Anyway, Dwayne's turn. He has 12 AP. He has to attack. Somehow, Mon's still alive. I don't even know what's happening. Here's Kiraga on Dwayne. He's healthy again. Cloud still has 22 AP. That's a triple slash. That's a double. Well, it's Yuna dead. Dwayne's the only one alive. He, oh my god, he kills Cloud and full heals himself. Anybody who thinks Dwayne sucks, <laughs> the reaction ability right there. Oh my god. Dwayne also kills Mont. Wait a second. Is this the 1v3? Ultima comes out from Minwoo. Minwoo has to beat Dwayne 1v1. Dragon's Blade is absolutely busted. Because Minwoo had this, you guys. Minwoo was going to win. Except that Dwayne said, I'm going to proc Dragon's Blade twice. And he'll... Oh my god. And he kills her. He just cut her in half. What? What? what, what? This tournament is ridiculous. That counterattack, Dragon's Blade... 
did like actually carried that fight so hard. Dwayne absolutely carried that fight, actually. He disabled Mott, and then Mott disabled himself by not using abilities. That was nuts. Okay, uh, so Ace picks up the win in a shenanigans fight. Now we have Cuckington versus Zalk next. Let's head there. Okay, last match of the opening round, we've got Cuckington versus Zalk. If we look at their like previous records, right? Number of tournaments, they play in a lot of them and they have really good win percentages. Zalk has a 70% win percentage in these tournaments. That's up there, that's like Maverick level of insanity. So if we look into the room here, we're going live. Cuckington is going with his ice team. It is Laswell, Aranea, Valentine's Day, Salir for Cuckington. A really spicy team here. And then Zalk is throwing Gilgamesh, Halloween Little Leela, and Charlotte at him. Now, Charlotte's in the middle of the map and Cuckington's moved all the way to the right. It gets Little Leela to walk forward and drop her AoE, but they're ice units, so it doesn't hit them all that hard. Valentine's Day Salir counters with a detonation blast, and actually, that's pretty tanky little Leela. Now, she's frontlining, which I'm not sure is the uh, way to go here, but it is what it is. Charlotte does get her buff online. Gilgamesh is channeling probably a quicken or a haste. Here comes Leela casting a spell. There's quicken onto Charlotte. Let's see what she's going to do here. She's got a region on. 38 AP. She goes Stunning Edge onto the Laswell. It does hit him. And then Leela cures herself. Okay, Laswell's up. I smell a limit. No, he does not go with the limit break. Instead, he goes Mirror of Equity and he cuts little Leela down, leaving Aranaya to go. She jumps. Here comes Salir. This is a massive chain. Here comes the limit break from Salir. So this will be the second ice hit in a row. And then Aranaya landing is going to be the third. That's 1927 from Salir. Here comes the Lancer. 7206. Settle on the tank. Tank's down. It's Gilgamesh versus three. He's going to put a shield or something on himself. I'm not sure it's going to be enough. Laswell walks forward. 6471. Aranea, does she have the range here? She does not. What is Gilgamesh casting? He's going to put his armor on. Now, it's too bad for him that he did it after he took the massive amount of damage from Laswell. This will be a big Kotetsu, I think, coming out here from him. Yeah, there it is. It slapped pretty hard. I mean, if he could have, like, gotten his shield off first, I don't know. This is going to be a big damage. 3,700 with the shifting strike. Walls are not a problem for Aranea. She shifts directly through a little crack in the wall, punches Gilgamesh. He goes down, and Cuckington moves on to the semifinals. All right, semifinals coming up next. All right. Here we go, semi-final match. We've got Maverick versus Dervis. Now, note the attack totals and magic totals for both teams. Maverick has 3,800 attack and only 840 magic. Meanwhile, Dervis has 4,169 magic and 581 attack. So, very, very opposite teams here. Dervis's team took exactly three turns to annihilate the enemy in his first match. Maverick's Earth Boys were, uh, you know, maybe the MVPs in everybody's mind of the tournament so far, taking down the light meta. Both players are ready. So, I mean, we're about to kick this thing off. And here we go. Okay, so no change in the lineups. Remember, every player does have four units. They can sub in and out. But initial placement is way different. So Maverick's going. This time, Point Warp gets the Spirit buff online before the nukes come through. That could be a really big deal against three mages. Oberon did not get the buff from Noctis, but Moraga did. There's an AoE resist buff from Oberon. A big brain play there by the Earth team. You know there's going to be AoE damage coming out when you're fighting three mages. Getting your AoE resist up can be a way of resisting that, especially if they have things like spirit penetration and magic penetration. Here comes Malevolent Lightning from Abara. She's probably going to be the least effective damage dealer on the team because she's Lightning Element, yet only does about 1,500 damage right there to Noctis. Taunting Blade back at her almost kills her, but remember, she's the Earth Element unit. There's Grand Explosion from Glacella. It's Ildira's turn. She's going to heal him. Kiraga, look at that heal. That's 120 Ildira in action, and she can heal for big numbers. Here's Counterman Slash from Abara, and Noctis is down. 3v2. Okay, Classy Glassy's up, 5800. She goes Shadow Flare on the team. 
What kind of damage are we looking at here? Decent damage, but that AoE resist coming in strong. Oberon's up. He was the king of the last fight, and he immediately says, Abara, you're done. You're deleted. And Ildira says, hold on, let me do some math for you. Height 2 Holy coming in. Big damage, 3,500 onto the Oberon. That's no joke. Now, Mirage is up, only 13 AP, so he auto-attacks Glacella. She reactive forces him, almost kills him, then it's her turn. What's she going to do? She's going to go Shadow Flare again. Really loves using that uh, that Vision card ability. It kills them both. In fact, they all die in a nice little line there. And this Triple Mage team, what the heck? This team is popping off. That's the finals. Triple Mages makes it, makes it through to the Grand Finals. For a chance at the big prize. All right, we got one more semifinal though. Let's get to that next. All right, we are jumping in to our final semifinal match. The final semifinal match before the final finals. You get it. Anyway, it's Ace versus Cuckington. Cuckington sticking with his ice element team right here. Laswell gonna put his shield on. Then you got RNA and Valentine's Day Salir coming in. Ace running with the double dark physical damage dealers. Dwayne and Kane. Dwayne off of a 1v3 MVP performance in his last fight, and then Yuna backing him up. This time, Yuna not caught in the front line. She's going to get to channel her re-race here. Barrier comes in from Salir. That's going to be particularly effective in this fight, unless it gets removed, you know, by like Kane. I believe Kane got the ability to remove barriers. I might be, uh, don't quote me on that. I might be wrong. I don't remember. Anyway, re-race comes through for Dwayne. Laswell's up. He has the range. He's going to go Mirror of Equity Haze. Big damage onto both. RNA follows that up with the Shifting Strike. And your MVP from the last fight almost dies, but he had re-race. Okay, Valentine's Day Salir coming after Dwayne. Dwayne's like, look, I'm going to go Armor Crusher. Half of RNA's HP gone. Salir, does she have the range? She does. She has the range for the Limit Break. Max range. Bombardment of Love. Dwayne's life is looking over. And there it is, 5,500 damage, he's dead. Now, Yuna does have full life, but with Kane being so low on HP, I feel like she probably goes for the heal here. Yes, she has Smile Practice comes out, so Protect and Shell on both of them, and the heal. Brain Piercer from Kane, it kills La or it kills, um, it kills Aranea and critically does not confuse Laswell. That move has a chance of confusing, it doesn't land. There's Laswell killing Yuna, and it's Kane versus two. All right, Kane, only 16 AP. That's going to make this a tall task. He's going to buff himself, attack up, agility up, and he's going to stand still. Salir gets to go. She pops his courage. Kane needs a double kill right here. He's going to jump. It's La Oh, he ends up tanking the Laswell because he's in the air. So Laswell puts his shield on. That's a good play if you can't do anything else. Salir, 3,600 damage. It's not enough to kill her. Laswell's up. He's looking to cut him in half. Here it comes. Slap. Kane's dead. 3,110. And Cuckington makes the finals with the Ice Squad to face off against Dervis. Alright, that's all that's left, so you know that's coming next. Alright, here we go. It's the finals. And here's the special little spreadsheet for the finals. It's Cuckington versus Dervis. If you look on this, both of them have played in several tournaments, bef tournaments before. Cuckington 25, Dervis 12. Both have won tournaments in the past. Uh, and look at that win percentages. Both of them win about 60% of the time in tournament play. Now, Cuckington has run his ice team every time so far. And Dervis has run his mage team every time so far. Dervis has UR Zazan on the bench. Cuckington has Varush on the bench. If we jump into the client here, though, you can immediately see that Cuckington has gone to the bench. Varush is coming in for the grand finals. Dervis looks to be sticking with the tried and true mage team here because at 581 attack, I'm guessing UR Zazan literally cannot be in a team and that team only have 581 attack. Meanwhile, though, Varush adds a little bit of elemental variety to an all-ice team that would have been facing off against a classy glassy, one of ice's uh, most dominant counter picks, right? So both players have readied up. Initial placement is over. And initial placement, by the way, has absolutely won both of these players a match so far. In Dervis's first fight, if you remember, he was forward, enemy team was forward, instant wombo combo, triple kill, game over. Cuckington went all the way to the right against a Charlotte who was in the middle, 
killed the rest of the team before Charlotte. That's a recipe for success. So both these players with big brain initial placement strats, we're just waiting for him to hit the go button and then we'll be in the match. Okay, we're loading in. It is indeed Varouche double ice from Cuckington. We knew that was coming. And like we thought, it's the triple mage setup from Dervis. Okay, Laswell moving around with the shield on. Classy Glass, he's a big threat in this fight. Her big fire magic damage is uh, it's something to be worried about if you're running two ice units. Here comes Ildira's Theorem. I gotta say, EX Ildira has looked very, very strong uh, in her first showing. A bar is up. She's also had a very good tournament. She's going to drop Malevolent Lightning here. Let's see what kind of damage this does. Who's it going to hit? It only hits Aranea, and it does about 60% of her HP, it looks like here. Varush coming forward. He's going to put his barrier on. Now, this is why Varush came in. That is a magic barrier and regenerate. RNA is dead. Varush is going to have to do some heavy lifting here. And Glassy actually wastes a turn right there. Wadaraga comes out. Varush completely blocks it with the barrier. A bar is up. 51 AP. That's low. Counterman slash gets through the barrier. But note that Abara is it down to 26 AP. Varush's barrier couldn't do it. He took three hits, but the third one killed him. It's going to have to be a 1v3 from Laswell. And it would have been really nice for him if he could have killed uh, killed Abara in one hit. He does it. He does block Glassy's attack. Now, Ildiro might get caught in healing mode. Nope, she's going to go for the damage. Holy comes out, 2363 onto Laswell. Does Ibarra have the AP to cast a spell? I think she does at 26. It's actually Brave Breaker. That kills Laswell. And Dervis picks up the win. You guys, I'm not going to lie. When I was watching Dervis make his picks, I kept thinking that he was getting like blocked by other people in the draft and never could put a team together. Dead wrong. Dead wrong. Apparently, the way you win in auto... War of the Visions is do three really high damage mages and run at the other team and kill them fast. It worked every time. So, Dervis, congratulations. You are the winner of the New Year's Cup. Way to go, man. Good tournament from Cuckington. Good tournament to everybody who played throughout the whole month. It was a lot of fun. Uh, next week's tournament is not going to be on Friday night like normal. It's going to be on Thursday night on the Square Enix official channel. Uh, Justin will be there. I will be there. Palladia will be there. Um, and I don't know actually who the players are yet. I haven't been told who's playing in that thing. So if you're playing, I'll see you there. Tune in to the Square Enix live stream to check that out. And we'll get back to our play the week after. All right, guys. Thank you for watching. Have a great night and I'll catch you next time. Peace.